Welcome back, welcome back, Ashy Knuckle, friends, family, faithful, everybody in the house. Today, we're just going to talk about one little subject, about this little upset that occurred, what day was it? Saturday, July 8th, right? July 8th, between, uh, uh, what was, what was this, how do you pronounce this guy's name? Dukas Dudu P? His name is Circus Soap Delay. What is it? Circus. John, how do you pronounce it? It is Drickus. Drickus Duplessis. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how you say it. S is silent. Oh, oh. And wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Hold off. One second, John. One second. I'm Mosey P. I'm with uh, my co host, B Dubs. B Woods. And Johnny Dubs. We got uh we both share the last name Woods, but um as in the Frenchman Dirkus Duplessis would say, we are not brothers. Wow. Hey Pussy, you still there? <laughs> yes, I, I'm still here. Um Dirkus Duplessis. I told you about over a year ago. He would be a champ. And he has arguably cleared a former champ. One of the, like, if it wasn't for Izzy, he would be the current reigning champ. So I think is a harder matchup overall than Izzy. And he cleared him easily. You looked at me like I was insane when I said that he would be a title contender, a champ. That hasn't changed. I still look at you like you're insane. There, see, I went. I I've been following him since his days in South Africa when he was like fighting on the, the what was it KSW. He he is a very good fighter. He just has a very weird, awkward style, but he has the wrestling. He has the physicality, and he does have the like the power. He definitely. <clears throat> That's true. That was on display. Like he, I, I, I was one of the um, panelists who predicted a slaughter by um, Robert Whitaker. I didn't think Dirkus would look. I thought he would look normal against um, Bob. One thing I did discount though that you just mentioned is the physicality. He looked. Do we have a new legendary fighter? Is Fix Nose Duplessis in the same realm as like Sea Level King and you know all the other legendary fighters? Mm, that is true. Well, he 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 was pissed off about that question, but after the post fight, he's like, "Yeah, that's real. I, I am a I'm a new man." So. Like he, because he always said that uh, he had cardio for days, but we just couldn't see it because of the mouth breathing. But I mean, he 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 put the gas on, yeah. and and Whitaker and Withered. So <laughs> did you did you mean to do that, Whitaker Withered? Yes. Like, like <laughs> yes, that. I did. The uh, alliteration. Hey John, um, uh, John, I want to give you some respect because you did. You were the lone wolf. On that one, I think everyone in the group chat uh, was all dogging you for picking Dirkus. We thought you were just a Dirkus lover, a supporter, and you want to see your boy do it. And you called it. He completely dominated Robert Whitaker, which um, I mean, Izzy did knock him out in the first fight. Second fight was a little bit closer, and Rob has been knocked out. It was Rob. Rob, I mean. He got knocked out at 170 pounds versus Wonder Boy. He got knocked out versus Izzy in middleweight. He got crushed a bunch of times, but not knocked out <clears throat> in those two wars he had with uh, the immortal one, Yoel Romero. But Dirkus made him look. I would say Dirkus's knockout was probably the best one before Izzy's. Because Izzy. Left hook them, TKO'd them, had him hurt in the first round, but then finished it off in the second. Plus, he just ran him over like a Mack truck. 
what I what I love the, the sequence because like he he keeps his guard up after he drops him, but then he sees it and he starts going and he he goes to the body and just keeps on like instead of head hunting, you know. Uh, it, it, we saw the same thing in the Volk where Volk, you know, landed a few headshots, then went to the body and then slammed him down. Uh, it, it was like very funny to watch them both do like a very similar sequence. Um, and like the physicality of Drake is, uh, like when Izzy was next to him, like he, he just looks massive compared to him. So I think that that will be a factor in that fight because if so I've been, I've been watching tape of Izzy, if I watch tape of, uh, Rob and, uh, so I, I, I see a lot of, like, holes in Izzy's game that, that you know, you, it's easy to say that because, uh, you know, he's only been beaten by, you know, Kira. But Vittori would have finished him if Vittori was, n- <laughs> was an actual uh, competent fighter. Like, he didn't even put the body tri- triangle when he had that choke. Um, Izzy leaves himself open to takedowns. And... If Pierre can take you down, imagine what uh, Drickus is going to do. And we know that they, they've already sparred in the practice room. And Drickus, like as he said, he, oh, he wrestled fuck me. And he's like, yeah, man. man. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see that matchup. I think it's going to be far less one-sided than people think. Because you don't just run over Robert Whitaker. Unless you you have something, and I think the timing, the awkward timing, is going to really, I don't want to say mess with Izzy, but it's it's going to like affect that that fight. I think it's going to be a factor because Drigas is a is a as a finisher, eighteen finishes out of the last nineteen. Uh, in his kickboxing uh, kickboxing days, he had thirty three knockouts or thirty two out of thirty three wins, all by knockout. So the, man, the man is very competent, and uh, he just hasn't gotten respect. And I, I see people uh, saying that Rob is washed, or Rob isn't as good. Trying to because de- de- they can't understand how this guy, who who had that war with uh, Tavares, was able to just make Rob look like light work. Styles made fights. We know that we've known that since the beginning, so it's why it's kind of hard to compare the individual results from a previous fight to a current one or an upcoming one. So, if you watched a fight with Izzy versus Brunson, it was a one sided beatdown because stylistically it just makes more uh, um, those kind of awkward. Chin in the air, herky jerky, non technical brawlers who have knockouts like um, Derek Brunson, they walk right into Izzy's counters. So he makes them, they look amateur when they're on the feet versus um, Izzy. And that was initially Derek's game plan was to take Izzy down and ground and pound them. But it just, the thing is, it's a lot easier said than done. Like it's, it seems like all he has to do is, you know, grab a single or, you know, shoot him on a double and then get him down. But he isn't as easy to get down and hold down as some people may think. And if you look at Durkis's fight versus Derek Brunson, Durkis was rocked a couple times against with Derek Brunson. But that's why I say it's like the, the styles kind of make the match. And you can't really say, okay, this guy did well against this guy. So that means he will then do well against another guy. Izzy's a champion, and he's proven that he's pretty much lapped the division. He's beaten uh, some of the top contenders twice. So until proven otherwise, I'm going to say it's going to be huge edge Izzy. But I do feel like this might be his toughest matchup in the division outside of anybody at 205. Um, Dirk is, is a I, big I, middleweight. He's a really big middleweight, so I think that can play a factor and it being a little bit more competitive than, I guess, the odds makers and some of the fans might expect. But I think it's going to be business as usual for the champion. I don't think 
Uh, Dirk is going to turn into Khabib 2.0 and be able to hold him down and ground and pound. I feel like this fight is going to be um, much like the Costa is Adesanya fight, where Costa was physically dominating finisher, and then he gets in front of Izzy and he sees that it, it's not that easy standing in front of him and trying to be a marauder. If he comes forward and is reckless, he's going to get counted to sleep, leg kicked into oblivion, and then eventually finished. That's how I see the fight going. I. I don't think he's going to be like Costa. Costa, he, he's not, I don't know. He, uh, I, can, I can see what you mean, but I, I don't think their styles are comparable. I think he'll, uh, he won't be as willing to go toe-to-toe with Izzy as others were. You know what I mean? Uh, just because he's, we, we've seen the tape. We've seen how good he is, you know, kickboxing. I don't know if he'll he'll let him like just have his way with him. I I, I don't know. I just I feel like his he's going to really impose his like physicality on Izzy in a, in a way that few have. Because like Izzy I mean, doesn't that, like that is his path to victory. I mean, if you would assume, you would assume. That Izzy would have the edge and stand up with the reach and the technical ability, um, the precision striking, and all of Izzy's, Izzy's the, um, I guess all of his holes, if you call them that, would be in the grappling department. I mean, his only loss that we've seen in the UFC outside of Pereira was at 205 against Jan Blachowicz, and Jan basically just sat on him. So. Yeah. If Jan is a much bigger man than uh, Dirk is Duplessis. So you're talking about a, a borderline heavyweight who cuts down to 205 against uh, a borderline 205er who cuts down to 85. Duplessis is a physical specimen. He's, he, in the, at least in the Rob, in this upcoming, I mean, this fight on National Fight Week, International Fight Week, excuse me. He looked very physically impressive versus Robert Whitaker. I was I was impressed. He didn't, he didn't get tired, he didn't gas. He uh, had a lot of output, and he was able to finish uh, who I would consider to be one B in a division. Now, when it comes to this specific matchup, as a fan, I want to see Izzy get tested. I want to see some new blood in there. I didn't want to see Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya three. So in a way, I got what I wanted. Izzy got what he wanted. He wanted Dirkus to win this fight. So did I, because I wanted to see a different challenger outside of all the speculation. Hamza doesn't seem like he wants to fight anytime soon. Um, he's teetering between middleweight and um, 170. And then there's nobody except for you no know, intriguing matchups that he hasn't already had at 85. Except for this one, so I'm excited. I hope that this fight, I know the lead up is going to be fun because these guys have some bad blood. Um, just like Robert Whitaker and Israel in the beginning, uh, is Robert was questioning Izzy's kiwiness because he's obviously not from um, New Zealand. He's uh, he's Nigerian born. He moved to New Zealand and he's uh, and then, yeah. internationally in kickboxing, so he's in. China and some parts of Southeast Asia. So they had the same back and forth, like of him being a real Kiwi, and he is he called in question Robert's Kiwiness, so to speak. And now Dirk is just doing the other side. He's saying I'm a real African. I live and breathe in Africa. I fight in Africa. Whereas you claim to be from Auckland and you you live in the U.S. or whatever. They're not a real African champion, so they got this whole 23 and me thing going on. Uh, which, I think is kind of, which I think is kind of funny. Because uh, Izzy's obviously def- obviously an African native. And I don't know I don't know if you have to live in the country you're born in to be still um, to rep- represent them. I mean, okay. Kamal Uzman's Nigerian. He grew up in Nebraska. Um, I got. I I have a, a a point I would like to make on that. That oh, yeah, was, was brought, shot. brought brought to my attention, and because like Izzy after the Pierre fight, 
where he's saying, he didn't say his name, but he's talking about Jerkis, and he's saying, those who paved the way for you and came before you, all that. Which, Izzy, Izzy and, and Yanu and Usman, they did not pave the way. Because they, they are, well, two of those guys are children of privilege that were able to move to, a, you know, to the States and to um, New Zealand and were able to have, like, super gyms, all the access to everything, like, you know, all this good stuff. And that's how they, you know, that, that, you can't say that that did not contribute to their success. Whereas, you know, in South Africa, there are rolling blackouts. There are, it's like a very dangerous place. But he's, he's forging his own path and he's showing that you can stay in Africa. You don't have to leave your home country, your home continent to be able to be successful. So I think that is very interesting aspect, you know, uh, you know, he the way he framed it, I think, was poor. But it's all fair, fair in in the fight game, right? Uh, I think Izzy's a, a huge hypocrite. Let's just be honest, and he is uh, he, he he lost his composure. And I don't, I think that is going to be a factor. I know uh, Mosey was saying that that could be real bad for Jerkus, but I don't think so because when you're fighting out of anger and and all that, like. If that if that is in your mind at all, that's going to affect you, and not for the the positive. Even though he's motivated, he's not going to be. Uh, you know what I mean? Like when he's face to face with him, those thoughts because he he's clearly insecure about the fact that Drake is calling him on his shit. Like you know you you how can you say that you're a Nigerian champion when you barely barely go visit? Uh, you don't like take care of your you know people. Your child of privilege, which I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You're saying Izzy is a child of privilege because he left Nigeria to well, a his family is very wealthy. They had servants and all sorts of like big ass house in Nigeria. You know, they they went to private school. Like, he's a, a fluent. Um, let's not let's not you know. Uh, wait, wait, where are you getting where are you getting this information, my G? I thought he went to school in uh, New Zealand, and they were making fun of him because he was, for Not better words, uh, a foreigner. Yeah, but it was still a private school, and he's still very successful in in academics, according to him. Um, and he talks about having you know maids and all this other shit back when he was living in Nigeria. I don't know. I don't know who they are, but wait, how does that how does that make him a hypocrite? Well, he's hypocritical in the fact that he called into question Rob's kiwiness, being from Australia and all that. Now he's getting called out on the same thing, and now he's flipping out. Uh, and he's called himself Chinese. Uh, he's called himself a kiwi. He really doesn't have a identity that, unless it, it suits a, a narrative that he wants to say. If, I mean, if he had always that's been like situation of um, when and Rome do what Romans do, I mean, he was being he was under a Chinese banner. But what is he supposed to say? I don't know. I, I maybe I'm proud to be a Nigerian fighting here in China. I don't, you know, instead of oh, I'm Chinese, I'm black. I mean, he's, I'm he's obviously not Chinese, Chinese though. Yeah, but he says he has a Chinese heart. Right, but he's it's a sponsorship. Uh, It'd be like you saying, um, if you were sponsored by Coke, and then you're like, "Oh, I'm a, a proud. Uh, my family's a proud Pepsi family, but Coke pays the bills." So I gotta sit here and talk about uh, Pepsi to be to keep it to be a non hypocrite. Yeah, like a lot of the well, athletes I mean, that eat fat or they, they get sponsored the by fast food. They ain't eating fast food. They're just doing well, the commercials. Well, they need to dirty little for China. Which is, is uh, something I, I kind of would like to see Sean in the mix as well, Sean Strickland, because he's his. I just recently saw the Piera, when he was fighting Piera and Izzy was fighting Candier, that press conference was gold. Yes. Just Sean, Sean, got, Sean won that verbal. You know, he, he made fucking Piera laugh out of all people when he was saying, get this man, Alex, get this man. Um, 
Wait, that was the fight. That was the fight where Pereira was matched up against Sean, right? Yeah, and he was like, when Izzy was like giving him shit, he's like, "Oh, Pereira, come, come get this man. Take care of him for me." He took care of him. He too. Yes, he took care. Yeah, of I think him. Sean got knocked out in that fight. Yeah. Uh, well, Sean, Sean, Sean did the first one. One that well, Sean was, was, uh, taking a he was taking a cage nap. Yeah, I mean, well, he, the that's what I like about this guy is he uh, he, he admits that he has a, a chin like a girl. But if you just touch it, he'll go to sleep. And he, he took that he took that beating, and he got back in the gym. He started working on, like he he said that he's gotten more serious in his training. And he's trained with Pira, which, I mean, what what better way to get better at fighting than fighting a guy that beats your ass? Oh no doubt. No. I mean, look. When you're fighting the best guys in the world, you better be training with um, some iron sharpens iron, so you better be training with the top guys in the world. Uh, as far as small gyms are concerned, I mean, it, before Israel Adesanya and Alexander Volkanovsky, uh, Dan Hooker, we didn't even know about city kickboxing. I mean, Kai Carl France and all those guys, they kind of made that small gym into a bigger gym. It wasn't already this powerhouse that just produced all these world champion fighters. It was a small gym that got put on a map by some of the best in the world. Alex Wokanowski is currently number one pound for pound, um, and he got my vote. And Israel Adesanya is clearly the middleweight, uh, the reigning middleweight king. So it's not like he went to, you know, AKA or uh, any major gym and just became a product of a major gym, that small gym in um, New Zealand got put on a map by the guys who we are currently talking about. Shit, back in the day, there was only like one Australian fighter that you could think of, and that was uh, Sadaropoulos, I believe. George Sadaropoulos. I think, oh, I think so, isn't, he, isn't he Greek? Well, I mean, he was from, he was fighting out of Australia. Australia. He was like okay. the only well, guy. Well, Whitaker's fight out of Australia, but we're New Zealand. Um, the city kickboxing is in, is in New Zealand. Yeah, that, I'm talking about that region. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. That region. And as far as like the whole African thing is concerned, uh, Izzy's from Nigeria and uh, Dirkus is South African. So we're not talking about the same re- place, not in the same region. Like, this is the same continent. Africa's huge, but. There's already three African-born champions. Um, Francis Ngannou is from Cameroon. He was born there. We know his story, uh, how he fought. He stayed, uh, crazy. He went to some crazy lengths to get to the U.S. to get an opportunity to be able to showcase his France. stuff. He, get, he did crazy stuff just to get to France. Right. Digging so, mud out so water. I, I can, Francis... Is is the one that I will like exclude from my. But Usman and, and Izzy, they they were from a fluent family, and that that is that that pays a factor in in this, I think, because again, like you know, South Africa, Africa itself is huge, and South Africa is its own thing. But there aren't there aren't that many. I I, I I'm willing to bet there aren't that many gyms out there. There's not that. You know, a lot of nutrition, you know, and all that, like the good stuff that you're able to consistently, the infrastructure as well. Well, I, and Nigeria is pretty advanced, but Cameroon is pretty bad. South Africa has gone really bad. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think that is a. I think, um, I think the athlete makes the gym and not the other way around. Because China wasn't known as an MMA powerhouse until they start having successful. Fighters come out of China. Um, most notably, I mean, you got Wei Li, um, who's the one. She's is she, is she currently the women's champion, right? Did she? Oh, did she lose it? Sorry, I can't remember. I know she was the champion at one point, but did Wei Li lose? I thought she, she was still champion. Okay, and um, her her, her uh, countrymate um, Yan Shanan just won a really big fight as well. Um, but China wasn't known as some MMA powerhouse at all. So I don't necessarily think it's 
the gym, I think it's the individual athlete that makes the gym. Yeah, sure. Look, look at um, look at uh, Canada uh, with with Ross Abi. It was mostly GSP, and after GSP, we got uh, God. His name's escaping me for a second. Um, Rory, Rory McDonald. He was there too, though. After right after Rory and GSP, it was crickets out of that gym. Is anybody? No. So I think it's more the athlete, not the gym. And Drickus is well, obviously Drick is extremely talented. Like we're not. I don't want to discount how good Drickus is. I'm just saying in this particular matchup. This is going to be a bigger test for him than it will be for Adesanya. I think this is business as usual for Adesanya. I've already given you my prediction now. I think the fight will go. Um, this is a huge step up for Drickus. And I think a lot of fans um, of Duplessis are going to be surprised at how this fight goes. However, I'm intrigued because, I, like I said, I want to see some new blood in a middleweight division when it comes to the title picture. We haven't had that in some time. We've had a lot of rematches. So I, well, I, you know, I, I am, I don't want to say I'm biased, but I, I do think he, he, he is going to be a bigger test for Adesanya than like Costa, Vittori, and those guys. I think, I think he's up there with Piera in terms of being able to push him into uncomfortable and not just, you know, coasting with point fighting that he has been doing with other guys because he's that far above them. I don't see the fight going to a decision. Someone's getting KO'd or someone's getting submitted. I think this fight's going to be very similar to the Kelvin Gastelum fight, but somebody is losing by submission or finish, like John said. Somebody's getting finished, regardless. This fight's not going to a decision. It's going to be very similar to the Gastelum yeah. fight. That was a war. The, the, the Gastelum Adesanya fight was a five round war. I see it going the same um, way, though. I'm taking the under on three rounds in this one. Oh, oh, oh wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Just so we have uh, records and receipts. That's what they call it nowadays, right? Receipts. What's the yes. uh, bet, John? What's the bet? What are we doing? What are we doing for this one? Uh, what are we doing for this one? If I can't I watch know. it with you guys. We'll we'll uh we'll do something. Well, I got Adesanya. So what are we doing, John? What are we doing? Oh, man, good question. Well, we'll have to uh, let me think about that. Let me ruminate on it. But we'll, it's it's up, no it's monetary it's value. We we could, we could just do push ups or something. You know what I mean? I, I could shave my stash again. I could do something <laughs> funny. What whatever whatever. I ain't wearing no dress though. <laughs> No. no, you know, I, I, I buy some pizza well, or something. You know, we we do something like that. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure it out. I buy a, a box. I, I have some. I, I got one. I got one. I got a good challenge. I got a good uh, reward. When is so that fight? This? Hold on. When is that fight supposed to be? Is it? Wait. Is it before November? It's supposed to be in it's nine September. weeks. Nine weeks. So September. September ninth, I believe. Ooh, open okay. day of football, too? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. NFL kickoff. All right, I got one. So, John, if Izzy wins, you got to go online. Come online. You got to get a camera. And you must do the one chip challenge. I got two of them, if too. If Trickus wins, I'll do the same. Ooh. The what? One chip challenge, the spicy chip. Okay. I got it. I got we, got, it. we got a bet? I got, I got the chips, so y'all good. What do you say? Uh, let, me, let me think on that. Let me think on that. I'm, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Look, man, if, you, if, you, if it goes the way you predicted to go, you won't be eating the chip. It'll be me. Oh, I, I have no doubt that Drickus will win. Okay. There, if, no, so this should be easy, easy work. Oh yeah, September 9th. Okay. It's, it's to be ninth determined or... for uh the card. The only fight they have on there right now is uh Carlos Olberg against the Woon Jung. Korean. 
I probably said that name all wrong. And uh, to, for, I'm going to also go on the record to say that this is probably uh, the least confident I've been in a bet with Israel Adesanya getting involved. I feel the same energy kind of like that I had with Izzy moving up to win the 205 championship against Blahovic. And it's not because I think uh, Izzy will struggle against um, a bigger opponent in Duplessis, but I think Duplessis does have an awkward enough style to be able to land something powerful and be able to compete in the grappling exchanges if there are any. Um, the, the thing that gives me the most confidence is the distance management and the ability for uh, Izzy to be accurate. That's what makes me have the most confidence in this fight. I think he'll be able to pick him apart from the outside before we even get into those takedown situations. And uh, I think he'll be able to hurt Drinkus enough to where he'll be uh, thinking about those, thinking about every time he comes in close, he'll get hurt enough to where he'll have to be much more cautious. Sort of similar to like the, the Costa fight. Costa was frozen in front of him for a long time because he would just get punished for every single mistake. And Drickus makes a lot of mistakes when it comes to technically uh, technical striking. He's uh, he's open a lot. He has his awkward movement, sort of like Keith Jardine, um, a, a UFC 205 throwback. Very, very awkward movement, hard to predict in time. However, it does leave you open to traditional um, setups. So Rob wasn't yeah. able to explain it. Rob has a little bit. Uh, Rob has a lot. Uh, Rob a smaller middleweight, so he was um, able to get away with some stuff that he won't be able to get away with with the, with the champion. I'll, uh, I'm very, I'm very optimistic about. I I know that's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a banger for sure. For sure. Uh, speaking of bangers, can we talk about? who I think is now in the GOAT discussion. The absolute banger Volkanovski put on. Just beautiful. Like, how, I truly think he's top four of the GOATs in, in my, my book. If he goes up and he beats Islam again and gets the, the nod or finishes him, then that will... You there'll be no more discussion if you have. No, I mean oh, even right as, now? as it stands, I think that uh, Volk is number two on that pound for pound list. I mean, obviously, um, I still think Jones is the best, and he's proven to be uh, the goat. He's moved up and become champion, dominated two hundred five forever, and now he's um, the reigning heavyweight champion. I think John deserves uh, his spot as pound for pound number one. Right now, Volkanovski is pound for pound number one in the rankings, in the official rankings. However, if you go b based on body of work, I say John is number one. Volk's number two. I agree with you, John. I think he won that Islam fight. I'm, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. I know I know. We, we thought he won it the night of, and people were like, everyone on the podcast was saying, oh, that was just us being drunk, but... I, like I, I've always been vocal about that, especially since I like <laughs> went and highlighted all the uh, the new point scoring system with a ten eight for that last round, and it's like <sighs> you, if you're not going to judge a fight on its whole, like the la later rounds have to be more impactful because if if you're if we're stimulating a fight, right, like a street fight or a life or death situation. The longer it goes, if you're not able to keep up, if you're getting your ass kicked in the later rounds, like that has to count for more than you doing well in the start. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think I think the judging we we talk a ton about how bad the judging is in mixed martial arts. That ten point must system it works for boxing, but it doesn't really work so much for MMA. I think the they should if when it comes to like judging a fight. If you're going to do a 10 point muscle system in MMA, you got to give out 10 8 rounds a little bit more liberally, in my mind. I think 10 8 should be standard. If you see someone completely dominate the fight, if it's a 
domination to where the guy almost gets finished, then they should move more toward a 10-7 round. Didn't we have one of those recently? Tapuria, we did. right? Tapuria against Ed. Yeah, Ilya 10-7 versus, uh, what's his name? Um, Josh Amen. Amen. Josh give, Amen. That, give that judge a raise. Yes. We need more. We need, we need more of that. More, more judging like that. Because 10-8 should be, I think 10-8 should be standard. Like, it, you should get a 10-9 round if it's a very, very close round between both and one guy edges it out. That should be a 10-8. But if a guy clearly wins the round, uh, I'm sorry, if a guy edges it out, it should be a 10-9 round. But if a guy clearly dominates that round, it should be 10-8. And if it's a crucial domination to where, like, you got multiple finishing sequences, guys getting knocked down multiple times, or being in multiple uh, fight-ending sequences, like submissions and stuff like that, then it should be a 10-7. Because these, when it comes to judging a fight, I agree. It should be it should be judged on, its, on the whole. Like, every round should matter. However, the championship rounds, if it goes, on, you know, fourth and fifth round, the guy winning the fourth and fifth round should be waiting. And I think if he does, if they do the rematch in Abu Dhabi, I think Volk Vol gets it done. Because oh, his so. wrestling was, was, was very good. And we saw, like, Islam, like, he could get him he, when he took his back and he just sat there. And he couldn't do anything. Like, there's some hand fighting, but Volk, like, was just punching him in the face and was like, come on, do something, pussy. You know? Like, I don't think that should... I don't know. That, that just, to me, that, that you're not... You're stalling. You're not really fighting at that point. Like, because the hand fighting, there was a, a little bit, but he wasn't even trying after a certain point. Like, they, that... They sh I think they should have stood him up at that point. Well, it, it, here's, the, here's the only problem I have with that is grappling's a part of the sport. And if a guy has you in a compromised position, a spot where you don't want to be in, and you can't get out, you can't rely on the judges to bail you out. I mean, it's the same as a guy being in mount and doing nothing in mount. If they didn't mount, they're just covering up, or they're in mount, they're just holding position. I don't want to see stand-ups just because there's not much activity. You better work your way out of that as, a, as the person on the bottom. Yeah, yes and no. I think if if the other if the person that has you down is stalling, I, I, there, it's a very fine line, and it takes a good ref to know when. Because I mean, some like I forgot. There's like one with um, in the Usman Leon fight that was like he got stood up, and I thought it was a terrible decision. But there are some times where I think that there is it, again, it's a very narrow you know it can go really bad but I, I, I don't know. well they don't but have nothing lined up yet for that Abu Dhabi card and Charles has said that he won't be able to make that so hey did they ever say what both Paul, surgeries is uh, he's getting it done right away uh, he said that he should be able to be like it's not not major and he'll be back what able to fight and uh, he didn't say exactly, but he's like, you know, I broke my hand. And I was able to get back into it pretty quickly. And it's like, it's less severe than a broken hand. So, That's what. so I think he will be able to make the opposite of the card. Three months away? Because it's not Volk. Mm, cutting it close. Cutting it close. Yeah, Volkanovski earned my respect with the three victories he has. Let me refrain from that statement. The two victories he has on Max Holloway. Oh, I think the, the third victory is is what cements it. That cements it, the, the, the third one on paper. But the second fight, he lost that one. Allegedly, if you're biased towards Holloway. Uh, no, I mean, there's a lot of people that agree with that statement. But I believe that that's what pushed him to train so hard to prove that he was the better fighter in the third fight. So I give him that. He earned I mean, my he, respect. He, like he just keeps on every time we see him, he just is doing. He gets better stuff and better, right? Or he's just better. Better and better. And I, I, I truly think that if you were to scale him up, 
the only person he'd have issues with would be John Jones right now. So you you think he's uh he's planning to move up the lightweight eventually. So what fight do you guys see him having that's a really good one besides Islam? The fight with Charles, the fight with Dustin, Justin. I'm not sure about Benny after what happened with him and Charles. I think him and Chandler would be a really fun one, honestly. It would be fun, but I think it would be a slaughter for Chandler. After the first round? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, that, that's something Volta said that he uh, he needs to stop doing is like when he starts like smiling, congratulating people when they hit him, when he like he, he gets tagged. Yeah, that's what he did with Yaya. He's like, like I, you know, I I don't expect to get hit. Like in my mind, I'm not going to get hit by you. You're not going to get me clean. So when you do, I I got to congratulate you for acknowledging. You. But apparently, like some people felt that that was part of the decision in the Islam. So he wants to try to stop doing that. And the guy brought it up at the post fight. He's like, oh, I need to I need to work on that. I need to. I did that, that with Yair. He did it with Yair. Yeah. I mean. And Yair, did, like, he tried, but he, he, it, it's really unfair when you fight a guy like Bull. Because his, like, uh, one of my buddies, I watched the, the fight card with one of my friends that doesn't watch UFC, and now he's a fan. But it's going to suck because he had, you know, this is such a banger of a card, but he, he was pointing out, like, I pointed out to him, like, Bull has had the like a half an inch or half a yeah half an inch reach on Yair despite being five inches shorter. For real? He has a really long yeah, he has a long ass reach for a short guy. Damn. Which people don't I I think that's part of it like his success with being a shorter guy and being able to be more I don't want to say passive, but more defensive and counter play where you know usually the shorter guy has to be more offensive or else they get uh, besides Taporia who who challenges them for the, the belt at featherweight you know what I mean like I'm looking at the rankings right now it's like Arnold Allen just lost Yair just lost Ortega he's coming off a loss and injury to Yair so who does he fight? He's he's he can only go back and fight Islam again. Yeah, it's either Islam or Tapuria, and Tapuria would be light work. But like I was telling you before, I, I really feel that Chandler might sneak his way into that uh Islam fight due to the fact that he's not gonna fight Connor no time soon. Well it's it's either that or Gamrot. I mean, they could do the winner of the BMF title. I don't. I don't see because like that's going to be a fucking brutal fight. Yeah, unless unless somebody gets slept early, the turnaround even for that's going to be rough. Even if someone gets slept fairly early, the that's a lot of damage to be eating. Unless it's like in the first minute. Which I don't see either one of them like knocking the other out quickly because they both have pretty impressive chins. I see Justin. Uh, if he wins, he'll he'll take that he'll take that fight on that turnaround. I can see him taking that fight. I don't see Poirier taking it. I I I don't. Yeah, I agree. But I don't think Justin should do that turnaround if if he's gotten his ass kicked. Cause that's gonna fight be he, that fight should be a slobber knocker, literally. But who do you guys have for that fight? So I think Justin is gonna edge it out. I'm a fan. I'm watching as a fan. I'm a fan of the sport. I'm no picks. Oh, you, Brian. Um, in that fight, I would lean toward Dustin. That's fair. I I think that Justin has a bit more. He wants to try to 
because he said that he's only got so much more time left on his career before he retires, and I think he wants another push towards the title. And we saw during the the Bizev fight, or whatever he uh, he did it, he did go for a takedown. Like he shocked me. I I was literally floored that he even tried to wrestle. So maybe he's going to incorporate it more. Maybe he won't just like get into a firefight with Poirier. He probably will, but who knows? He might go for a takedown and and catch Poirier with his pants down. I, I think fight. he just has that. Good adjustment by Justin in that fight. That was a good one. Yeah, he he's not just a dumb brawler. Is is what I I've, I've no, noticed from that. So if he can, if it if it was the Justin from previous fights and he didn't have that, you know, adjustment, I would say Poirier would would easily because he's uh, technically a better and you know. I would say more well-rounded, but if Justin is able to make the adjustment and I don't know, do do something like unexpected, and his leg kicks as well, they are just brutal. And Dustin has even talked about how how he got hurt, I think, from fighting Justin last time with a leg kick, like he got injured in the leg. But it's going to be a barn burner. And you also have the Jan Bohovitz and Piera fight. The Costa's return. Yeah, that card's going to be a great one. I can't wait to watch that one. I'm finally off for one. I felt like it's been years since I've seen a pay-per-view live. I, uh, I put my vacation to him, and I don't know if it's approved yet. Alright, guys, so... Yeah. We had a good little chit-chat, running it back. It's been a while. Are you guys ready to call this one? Yeah, we can call this one. Yeah. If you guys like the content that you're listening to or viewing like subscribe share ashy knuckles mma on youtube where else are we at all platforms that you can listen to podcasts on i believe spotify apple whatever it's called on there and majority of the other sites that have podcasts on that note Zip it up. Zip it out. Zip it do that. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>